All right, everyone. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the new property wrapper, which is in Swift UI framework, which is now you can decorate it in your view call at fetch request. Now, since it's a bit different, I will go ahead and create a brand new project. Let's go ahead and launch Xcode. Create a new project. Select app. And we will just call it movie app using fetch request. If you check the use core data, then it's going to write a lot of code for you. And it's even going to initialize the core data stack for you. I'm not going to check it. I can initialize it myself using Core Data Manager that we implemented in earlier lectures. So I'm going to go to Next. Desktop is fine. So right now you can see that our project is created and we can see the preview on the right hand side. The first thing we need to do is to make sure that we are initializing our Core Data stack. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file called Core Data Manager. And we have already created the Core Data Manager a number of times. So I'm simply going to go ahead and paste the code over here. You can see that the Core Data Manager consists of a persistent container, which is eventually used to set up our Core Data stack. Currently, we don't have the name for our model file. So we also need to create our model file. Let's go ahead and add a new file. Data model. You can call your model anything you want. I'm just going to go ahead and call it movie app model. You can see that it creates a movie app model file where we can add an entity. I'm going to go ahead and add an entity. And going to rename this to movie. A movie can have a title, which can be a string property, and making sure the title is not optional. A movie can also have a rating, and I'm going to select integer 16, and we're also going to make sure this is not optional. So we must provide the rating as well as the title. Let's go ahead and build our app. Perfect. So you can see over here that we have initialized the Core Data Manager. Now, if you plan to use the fetch request, which is what we're trying to do, we have to give the fetch request access to the manage object context. So how do we do that? We will go to our main view or our app, which is the starting point of your application. And inside this, we should be able to say that what kind of a environment we want to inject. So in order for our fetch request to read an manage object, we can use environment for manage object context. The value is going to be the view context, which is the manage object context, which I can get from the core data manager dot shared dot view context. Next, let's go to our content view. Now let's say that the content view is interested in displaying all the movies and also allowing the user to add a movie. The first thing we need to do is we need to get that environment object into a variable. So we can simply go ahead and say, that give us the environment object belonging to the key, which is manage object context. We will go ahead and put it into a variable, which will be view context. Now, since we have the content view over here and we have content view over here in the previews, we also make want to make sure that the environment object is injected as the preview. So we are again going to go ahead and say manage object context and the value will be coming from core data manager. This is only for the previews itself. If you're not using the Xcode previews, which you can see on the right hand side, then 
you don't have to do anything. Okay, so this is great. We have created or we now have access to the view context and now we should be able to go ahead and perform a fetch request. So I'm going to go ahead and create movies which will be of type fetch results for movie and decorate this with a brand new attribute or property wrapper called fetch request. There are many different ways that you can perform a fetch request. We can pass in the entity and we can pass in the sort descriptors. Since we have already created the movie, we're simply going to say movie.entity. And for sort descriptors, I'm simply going to say sort descriptors and sort the movie based on the title of the movie in ascending order. Okay, so fetch request is done. Now, one of the things that you will realize is that we created the movie app model, but we never updated our core data manager to reflect that we are using that particular model. So let's go ahead and add that movie app model. You don't really have to include the extension. That should be enough. Now we can go back to our content view. And this request is going to happen whenever the view is loaded. And it's going to give us the movies as model objects, the core data model objects. Now we can go ahead and iterate through them. Keeping in mind that since we don't really have any movies, it's not really going to show us anything. So I can go ahead and say movie in, and I can use a text to display the title of the movie or just display nothing. Let's go ahead and actually run it on a real simulator to see if there are any errors or not. All right, so if we run this right now, we get into a weird error. And if you scroll up, you will see that the error doesn't really make that much sense. It's basically saying that no entity description in any model claim that the subclass of movie is an entity, which is not really true because we have created the entity called movie and it does exist. So after looking online and asking this question that why am I getting this error, Frank Foster, which you can follow him at Frank E. Foster on Twitter, he suggested that I should go ahead and do some modifications. The first thing is we need to make sure that this class is open. Open means in Swift that this class is accessible and subclassable outside of the defining module. So outside of this module, you can subclasses and it is also available. The other thing is that this particular class, which is our core data manager, should be using observable objects, should be conforming to observable object protocol. And finally, wherever we are injecting our view context, instead of injecting it like that, we will go ahead and create a state object which will be of type core data manager. So in this case, you can see that we are going to create some sort of a manager, whether it is core data or whatever. So I'm just going to call it core data manager. And we will initialize core data manager dot shared. And using the core data manager, now we can inject that value. So I can say over here core DM dot view context. Make sure that view shared is actually a property and not a function. Okay, so this is good. Now let's go ahead and run our application. I may have already inserted some stuff, so you can already see Batman being inserted. When I was testing out, I did insert that stuff. Uh, let me go ahead and show you how we can change that stuff now. So if I go over here and I wrap this, let's go ahead and first check out our canvas so we can see some of the shortcuts. There we go. Let's see if this works. We may not need, actually, we may not need the canvas in this case. 
and we can have over here, we can have a horizontal stack. So I'm just going to add some controls over here because this is a, we can quickly create that kind of an interface as I want. So I'm going to just drag the X stack, which contains a couple of different things. It consists of a text field. Whenever we type something in the text field, it is going to go to our state variable, which is declared on line number 17. And we will have a button which will allow us to add a title and a random rating to our movies. Keep in mind that our fetch request on the movies is saying that it will be sorting the movies by title in ascending order. Let's go ahead and run this. You may see that our interface is a bit different and it's kind of like over there on the top. So probably you don't really want it on the top. So right now we're just making some small modification on our interface, but this is completely up to you. Whatever kind of interface you want is perfectly fine. I'm just making these small modifications so we can at least look at our data. And we can go ahead and also add a navigation title. I will just call it movies. And when we are displaying the stuff, we can even go a little bit further and we can display not only the title, but also the rating associated with the movie. This is all UI stuff, so you can definitely do that. And we will use a plain list style. Now let's go ahead and run it again. Okay, now it looks a little bit nicer. We can even make it a little bit more nicer by adding a uh, part of padding. So let's go ahead and add a bit of padding over here. Okay, now it looks actually really nice. So let's go ahead and add the movie. I'm just going to add a movie called Iron Man and add a movie. The star or the rating will be applied randomly. Let's go ahead and add Batman. We have add Spider-Man. There we go, five rating. We can go ahead and add another movie. Let's say Lord of the Rings. And there we go, five rating again. Pretty cool, right? Now we can even make this better because right now our fetch request is coming and we had to write our fetch request right inside the view. But we can make it better by going to the movies extension and adding the fetch request as a function. So that means we can perform an extension on the movie. We can create a separate property, static var, which is of type n, nf fetch request. This is going to perform a fetch request on movie. And this is a lazy property. So only will get executed when you actually try to access it. And we will import core data. The first thing I'm going to do is going to create a request. So I can go over here and create a request. Next, I'm going to go ahead and define that how I should be sorting. So let's go ahead and define sorting behavior. And finally, we can go ahead and send the request back. Using the same approach, we can also define a request which is going to sort by rating. It's exactly the same code. But the only difference is that now we are sorting by rating in a descending order. Let's go back to our content view. And instead of doing all of the stuff over here, now we should be able to simply pass in a request. We can say movie.all, which means that give me all the movies. If I run this, you should simply see all the movies sorted by the title. But if I go ahead and change this to by rating, then you should be able to see that all the movies are sorted by rating. The higher rating movies like Spider-Man and Lord of the Rings are on the top and the lower rated movies are on the bottom. And the good thing is that if I go ahead and add another movie, let's say Water World, it will automatically be sorted by that particular rating. So let's go ahead and add another movie. 
let's say Margin Call, one of my favorite movies. And you can see Margin Call was one, so that's why it goes into the bottom. If there's a two or four rating, then it will go somewhere in the middle. So let's say Big Short, another great movie. Two, you can see it's right in the middle somewhere. So there you have it. You have seen that how you can use a fetch request property wrapper in Swift UI to populate your page and to perform these requests. Now, this is great, but it also comes with a compromise that right now we are not using the view model pattern and the actual core data objects are now exposed to the view, which is never really a good idea. But depending on your app, you can use this approach or the MVVM approach. Hope you have enjoyed it and uh, make sure to download the resource files.